right hello everyone so today we are with Astha Ghosh so Astha welcome and congratulations on making it to ISI thank you uh, I know you found it unbelievable initially that yeah, uh, you had to be able to talk ISI in your first attempt uh, while doing your college so Astha tell us something about your back so first tell us about the feeling that when you discovered that you know you have been selected interview also cleared and you are going to be an ISI student first what was the feeling I was having my breakfast, I remembered. Like I, I was just scrolling my phone, then I saw the Edusher group, like people were writing their ranks and their uh, centers offered. I was completely confused, like what's happening? When I opened the group, I saw that uh, the ISI has released the results. I, com I couldn't believe it at that point, like what has happened? Like, and I was completely mesmerized. I texted you, I texted sir. I was like, can you just check my result on my behalf? Like, it's not possible for me to do that. I cannot understand what to do at this point. Like, it's like everything my shut God. down for me at that point. And then you confirmed like, yes, my registration code is there. I got a seat and it was like a completely unbelievable experience for me. Like I still can't put it in words. Like it's been more than a week, but it's still difficult for me to like believe it that I got selected in ISI like in my first attempt. So like it's a big thing for me. Yeah. So has ISI been your dream since a long time? Yes. Or when did you think that, okay, I want to do this? Like when I uh, decided to pursue bachelor's in economics, um, I had this thing in my head that there is an institute, um, ISI, which offers a master's course. It also offers bachelor's, but it's not in economics. It's in statistics yeah. and math. So I was like, I cannot do their level of math. It's way ahead and uh, ahead of me. So I was like, okay, I can try their master's once. So I was talking to a lot of seniors when I got into my bachelor's course and they told me like, you can go for master's um, in economics from ISI. It's a very prestigious institute. Like you have wide options, like you can either do your PhD afterwards or you can go for placements and everything. So since then I had this thing, like I can aim for ISI once and uh, I got from a bunch of seniors about EduSure also at that point. So from there, my whole journey started with ISI. And meanwhile, uh, when I got enrolled and I started my prep, I got to know about that there is DSC, IITs, then IGIDR, JNU. So other institutes were also there, but ISI was always the prime from the day one. Like that was my goal from day one. I have to get in there. That is that is that is amazing. So Asta, one thing that you said caught my attention. You said that you know you couldn't do you didn't when that ISI also has bachelors. So um, now maths is an integral part of. So uh, would you just just you know for understanding that would you say that you are someone who was always good at maths or would you say that you have you are someone who's had to work hard at maths which one is it? I think I was good at maths like um, in our university they give a lot of focus on maths like from day one and to survive that and get good grades throughout I would say I was good at maths but not as good as like the ISI level of bachelors of maths or bachelors of stats like I've seen that tomato book which they release like for the prep of bachelors that's like way too high level it's like very high level like it's it's not at all similar to the maths they ask in the master's course msq it's very very different yeah, yeah. so in that sense yeah. it was a bit yeah, high level. It is. for anyone let's say who is starting out so tell us take us through your journey once before i ask you you know more questions and take us uh, so which part of the journey you felt was the most difficult first thing was like in my family, no one is from the economics background. Like, no one has any idea, like, from where to start, what to do for this whole preparation and everything. So I had to ask my friends, the seniors around me, like, what to do, what to do. And then they told me about, like, you can go for coaching, you can do self-study. So for me, finding the right guidance was the most difficult thing in the beginning because I knew that if I wasted my time at the beginning, it would be very difficult for me to catch up because all of these entrances requires a lot of practice, mock tests and everything. It's a very rigorous course. And to do it in like less than a year or like say six months, it's, it's, it's at least very difficult for me. And I knew from day one, like ISI is an extremely difficult institute to crack. Like you have to be, a, be very clear with your concepts. You need to practice really well in order to crack the exam. So for me, I wanted to find the right guidance from the very beginning. So it was the most difficult part. But other than that, definitely no, no, no. the preparation in itself was extremely tedious. Like you had to revise the concepts, then the frustration of not understanding some things. Like for me personally, macro was a bit difficult to grasp from day one. I, I used to forget the concepts. I used to forget the little nitty gritties here and there. That was extremely frustrating for me but um, so I will say finding the right guidance to overcome these frustrations um, 
the periods where you feel that now nah, it's better to just give up and like just just do some things with others are doing just give up your dream on going into isi or some big institutes just so for me overcoming that those feelings is again a very difficult thing so <laughs> so, and and so how did you do it like in if, if you are you are a third year student so there is all the college pressure that you have the college exams are there there are activities and events happening in college so all that pressure is there and with that of course the pressure that you know you are preparing for an institute which in the mind it is there that only 50 seats are there it's a hard institute to crack and uh, like you said that you have to prepare for your year day in and day out tediously so uh, i'm sure there must be good days there must be bad days so how did you pick yourself up on the bad days like what helped you sail through uh, the one year to make sure that you were on track like what kept you on track day one i wanted to remind myself one thing that there will be bad days actually there are more bad days than good days like to be yeah. very honest like from day one you will not be able to understand everything like even i remember when some kids are used to teach us um, some math topics in class like firstly i was to get completely like mesmerized what he's doing even like what are all these tricks and everything so yeah definitely i'll say in the beginning it's very difficult to grasp everything but over the time you have to practice you have to just remind yourself that if it's difficult for you it will be difficult for the others as well like everyone is starting from the same level like so you have to just keep confidence in yourself and just not give up it's going to be an extremely long process just trust the process go with the flow and over the time it will all become fine that's just one thing i reminded myself throughout the journey and uh, so uh were you uh, were you regular with the classes and uh, the uh, weekly tests that we used to take were you regular with those um i started um, with eco foundation i'll be very honest with you ma'am in eco foundation i was not that serious like my university uh, courses are extremely rigorous and tedious like if i didn't concentrate there i don't know what would have done like it's extremely difficult to pass those exams so uh, i concentrated more there but from the eco topper i became a bit more focused i was like no i have to now give my complete focus on my entrance prep like i have to be extremely uh, on time i have to be regular with the course with the classes so i attended the classes i gave the weekly tests and even the mock tests i gave so yeah, in that sense i was regular with the eco topper course okay so you were regular with the uh, the classes and you gave the box uh, regularly the weekly test regularly and uh, did you were you able to with your college schedule follow the uh, you know we try to finish the syllabus by december and then the iit jam so then so that you know you can focus on it so were you going with uh, the with everything or you know were there delays and uh, were you able to that time no i was a regular with the schedule i remember i used to come back from uh, university i used to sit from around 6 pm and i used to continue till midnight there were some days when i used to sleep at 3 am so i was like no i have to finish uh, the classes as per the schedule i have to be on time i don't i didn't like backlogs because personally i know it's very difficult to get rid of backlogs like when they start piling up it becomes a huge burden at the end so no, i was very punctual with that like i wanted to go with the schedule like no backlogs for me so i think that was uh, that's the key asta because i haven't seen a lot of people do that you know you try to feel that uh, between people who made it and people who, who, who didn't so one with uh, consistently with which the people who actually made it they uh, did their entire preparation so like you are saying that uh, you you made sure that there were no backlogs you made sure that you were regular with your studies and you know it was a it almost seems like you no know, this is a this is a given that i will do all the classes i will take all the tests i will finish the syllabus on time okay. you're taking you're saying it as a, as a very matter of fact you think ye to karna hi hai so that i think is a is a big thing that you had ki nahi ye to karna hi hai you know uh, then you you are not thinking ki are man kar raha hai nahi kar raha hai aaj mood hai ki nahi hai ye this is a given that i have to do this so that is i think a great thing that you did and incorporated into your routine which is that uh, you know this is i have to just do what is happening in classes so uh, you know great job on that kate great job so it uh, shows that you are a disciplined person uh, so great job on 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 that asta and uh, so you were just saying that you know after iit and cuet uh, you were you know you lost a little bit of confidence and a little bit of you were uh, worried so um, how was that like so when did that push you so after cuet and before iit there's a gap of 2 months so did that push you to study for isi even harder and you know think of what went wrong with let's say not uh, you know coming in the top 
for IIT and CUET? Did that push you harder for SI? It did definitely. I remember after CUET, I was very discouraged. Like I was very demotivated and um, and many things were happening at the same time. Like a lot of acad academic downs were happening for me personally. So I was like, it's better like to stop at this point. There were some days where I even thought of stopping. Like I was like, I will not give my ISI exam. Done with the dream, ho gaya work. Now just go on. Just do your masters uh, from the university where I'm going my bachelor's. I did my bachelor's from JU, Jadavpur University. So yeah. that's even good. It's a good university to do your master's. But I always had my aim that I wanted to do my master's from ISI. That was like my dream. Like if someone asks me what is my dream ISI is my dream like from day one so to even think that I was I was on the verge of giving up on my dream it shows like I was at a very low point in my life at that point but um, then I gave myself some time I went out I met with some friends talked with my family and then I started with my ISI preparation once again there were two months before ISI so I started taking things a bit slowly this time I was doing my PA, but this time I gave a bit more focus on my PB. I was like done with the MCQs for a long time now. After JAM and CVT, I'm done with the MCQs now. Because I was making way too many silly mistakes and it was extremely frustrating for me. So I was like, let's focus on the subjective part. Let's do the PB, let's revise the concepts. And um, I remember like the major part of my preparation for ISI was doing PB because I always had this thing in my head that if I want to get through ISI, this exam, I need to get a very good score in my PEP. Like, yes, PEA is important. You need to score well. You need to get above the cutoff. But PEB is like the most important thing because ultimately after the interview, it's the PEB which will determine your, yeah, you're getting into ISI or not. Like ISI has very yeah. limited number of seats. Like it's the PEB which is like the defining factor at the end of the day. So I'll say like the most defining part of my preparation towards the end was focusing on PEB. I remembered I used to do the same PEB questions like three or four times. Like I wanted to get everything correct every nitty-gritty, all the concepts and everything. So, yeah, so it was the PB which was the defining factor in the last stage. Yeah, that is, that is true. So, PB is uh, so important for ISI. Maximum weightage has been given to PB by ISI. So, that is something that, uh, and um, uh, practicing that, I guess. So, in the final exam, uh, so everybody found PB more challenging. But for you, did you kind of, all that preparation of writing answers and writing PB so many times, did that help you in the final exam? Did you feel? Like in the final ISI exam, like they gave those five questions, the five compulsory PB questions there. Yes, definitely. Because I remember I used to do the PB very thoroughly, like doing each and every concept as I just told you way back. So, yes, I remember when the examiner gave us, like, was, the invigilator gave us the question paper of PEB. Like, I saw five compulsory questions. You have to attempt all of them equal weightage. Like, that was a huge yeah. shock for me. I was like, every time they used to give nine questions and attempting four of those nine questions. So, there was a lot of choice before. But this time, the five compulsory questions, it's like an extremely big move, a very bold move. So, I was very scared. Not going to lie, I was extremely, I was panicking a lot. But then when I opened the question paper, I saw the questions. And then I understood that I have to start with the questions, which I'm extremely confident with. So I remember I started with question five. Um, then I started doing the questions, which I felt was doable for me. I could attempt the entire question. I can do it properly. And likewise, I attempted all of them, I'll say. I did question five and question three completely. I did it properly. And I matched my answer with us. So that was correct in that sense. Um, after that, uh, question one and two, I tried to do as much as I could. Remember question one, I did part A and part B properly, correctly. Part C, I couldn't understand a lot, but I still tried. Question two was actually an extremely simple question on joint probability, but unfortunately, I forgot the concept. Like, that was extremely frustrating for me at that point. Like, it's something which I've seen multiple number of times in the past papers. Like, particularly not in ISI, but definitely I've seen it in DSCJ, you know, at some point, joint probability. So, I was like, I need to get this correct, but unfortunately, I couldn't attempt the entire question, but I tried to do as much as I could, and fortunately, I matched my, I matched a part of my answer answer with us so in that sense it was also partly correct and question number four 
it was a question on signaling like a different concept a new concept to start with but um i did what i could do and by the time i understood the question that i ran out of time so i'll say i did my entire paper but there were some questions i did completely properly i did it correctly i put in all my concepts i did it nicely like explaining each and every step as sir used to say um but some questions i couldn't get but again as i left the examination hall i talked with people even they had similar experiences like some people to even left questions completely they were like they couldn't understand anything like it was yeah. and then the pressure factor was also there attempting five questions compulsory like you know like this is the thing which really separates people because whenever this pressure factor comes into play and you know that you have to score you have to get really good marks in pv in order to get an interview call and finally getting selected so is this thing goes in your head from continuously for the two hours like i have to do it properly i have yeah. to do but fortunately i didn't let this pressure come at that point i was very calm a very uncharacteristic thing of me to be calm during exams but um, i tried to stay calm and i did my questions properly and i guess that was like the defining factor for me to be a pb and i think i got uh, a pretty decent score yeah, i guess because you practiced so much Yeah, yeah. I guess because you practice so much and you could identify, like you said, that okay, this concept has not been coming in ISI, but DST, JNU, done similar stuff. So you know, uh, so that also, like you said, that practice that you did, the work that you put in, uh, that and focusing on PV. Yeah. So these things really work very well, uh, for you. And uh, Asta, what about the interview? How was the interview? Right. before the interview i just revised the concepts once again nothing new i just did everything properly um i went to the interview center it was in isi kolkata only so i went there uh, they made me sit with a bunch of other students like everyone was reading discussing doing their stuffs and fortunately i had the i was the first person to be interviewed that day like in the second slot afternoon slot so they called me i went inside there were three professors sitting um they asked my introduction my academic background and everything and then they gave me certain questions to do on board they were like simple questions questions on public goods uh, production cost a little bit of statistics cutosis and uh, one question they asked me actually that was like give a real life you know, example of positive cutosis sorry for positive no no positive skewness the real, real life instance of positive skewness um i did an undergraduate project in my university where we found out a real life instance of positive skewness which we could see uh, was happening in our project at some point so i said that answer to the professor and i guess they were really pleased with it like they saw that yes i have done a lot of work in my graduation i've done certain projects we have understood our concepts well we have implemented it into our daily lives and i guess that was again a very important and crucial factor in my interview which made them feel that no i have the capability of studying in isi i do have the skills and i guess that was again a very uh, the kind of thing which went in my favor because i did the uh, because i've done the project in my bachelor so yeah, yeah. handy for me yeah. Yeah. Mm. amazing so serendipity also plays a, plays a role sometimes yeah so thank you and uh, thank you for sharing your routine has gone behind you uh, you know making it to high isi so thank you for sharing it with everyone and uh, all the very best for your journey with isi and you know uh, a very bright career ahead from here all right thank you so much asta take care bye bye bye, bye.